Hello, this is Art at the Bookshelf Odyssey, and I'm doing the book acquiring tag today. And I was tagged by the Bookworm Adventure Girl quite a long time ago, actually. Uh, let's see. Uh, it was back in May. Uh, May 18th is when she tagged me in the video. So yes, I'm a little behind on my tags, but time to get to them today. So the book acquiring tag. The original tag was created by uh, Kristen from Enter the Book and I will link all of their uh, channels down below. Prompt number one, do you plan your book purchases ahead or impulse buy? And I can answer with a resounding yes to both of those. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll plan purchases. I have a list on Amazon that I, I buy from, and basically I'll just buy an order whenever I get enough money for the next book. I'll buy the next book off of that uh, unless I can find it on at a library or yard sale or something. But I am quite often probably just as much impulse buying as I am buying off of my uh, my my list. So, yeah, I kind of do both. Uh, prompt two, how do you decide what books to buy? Well, there are uh, authors I like that I will buy from authors like Louise Penny. I will buy whatever she writes you know, I used to pretty much pick up anything by Ray Bradbury, but I've got most of his books now. The, the few I don't have are way out of my price range because they're so rare. But yeah, so basically it's uh, primarily it's authors that I enjoy. Uh, then I like to shop for uh, for classics, for mysteries, and sometimes science fiction and fantasy. It can be real hit or miss with me. So I will tend to use the library for those first uh, just to make sure. But uh, yeah, if it's a series I'm reading and I want to read the next one and I don't have the book, then that'll be the next book I buy. So uh, question three, what is your philosophy on where you shop? Well, I would love to be able to shop local bookstores and independently owned bookstores, but we just don't have very many where I live. You know, we have to, the closest one is a 45 minute drive away. And, you know, that's a uh, half price books. And um, there's a used bookstore as well in, in downtown Omaha that uh, I really like. Uh, they usually have some fascinating uh, Charles Dickens nonfiction books available. Uh, I've, I've picked up quite a few from there. Yeah, it, it's mostly I shop where I can get the book I want the cheapest, unless it's a book I'm specifically uh, collecting, like an author like Louise Penny. I'll buy one of her books, even if it's full price. But because of the expensive books, I can't always do that for every book I want. But then I struggle because I really want to be able to support authors too. And I know that, um, you know, buying them used from a used bookstore doesn't necessarily support them as much. But part of what I like doing here on my podcast is being able to promote authors and and get them out, uh, their voice out to you that, you know, they might be able, uh, you might be able to uh, uh, pick up their book and help support them. So really primarily I, I would love to be able to shop for books in a way that helps the author first and then maybe a local bookstore. And then if worse comes to worse, you know, name brand store like Amazon or Barnes and Noble. Question four, what about little free libraries? Uh, we have some in our area and unfortunately it looks like they're the place where people dump books that they don't, that nobody would want to read or that aren't in very good condition um, they're not, not all of them are very well kept up on, but I think they're a great idea, to be honest. When uh, I was poor and hungry and needing books constantly, that would have been a, a great thing to have as a, a well-stocked and well-curated little uh, free library. So if you have one or if you run one, you know, make sure it's well taken care of and not just somebody's dumping ground for, for damaged paperbacks that nobody will want to read. And then uh, question five, how do you feel after acquiring a book? Uh, I, I feel pretty good after I get a book, especially if it's one I wanted. And I feel like I want to run home and, and read it uh, right away. But then, you know, I come home and see all the other books I have that I haven't read yet looking at me with with uh, accusation and I feel guilty. And then uh, I curl up in a ball and, you know, feel sorry for myself and read something else. <laughs> now, do I like to share in a book haul or diary? Um, I don't really do, haven't done a lot of book hauls on my channel. I usually, when I buy a book, it's usually just one or two at a time. So it's not often I have a, a full haul to do. I am not against that. I think it's great. I love watching book hauls to see what other people bought. 
and maybe even getting some uh, video of, of the inside of other bookstores. It's, it's, that's just great. That's just great booktube content right there. Question six, how do you feel looking at your books that haven't been read? Does it matter if it's a current, if it's currently a lot or little amount? Um, how do I feel? I think I just mentioned that. I, I feel guilty. Uh, like, oh, look at all these books I have you left to read. But, oh, I went and bought some new ones. So, yeah, it's a struggle. Uh, but what 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 are you going to do? Um, but no, seriously, I sometimes I look excited. Or, or I feel excited because it's like, oh, I haven't read those yet. This is going to be great. You know, I've got all of Louise Penny's books, but I have like the last three in her um, Inspector Gamache series. I haven't read them yet. So, you know, knowing that I still have three Louise Penny's Louise Penny books to read, uh, that's that's exciting. Unlike with Jim Butcher and uh, Harry Dresden, I've read all of his books now, uh, and so now I have to patiently wait for the new and latest Harry Dresden novel. So please get to work. Thank you. Uh, question seven: How do you decide what number of unread books is the right amount? I'm not sure how what that question is even what that question means, to be honest. Um, every, un, any amount is the right amount. I mean, as long as you have at least one, uh, you always have at least uh, a new book to read. I suppose if it gets to the point where you have hundreds and hundreds of unread books that you're just not reading and you keep buying, um, at what point does it go from collecting to hoarding? You know, <laughs> I've got a bookmark that says it's not hoarding of its books. Question eight says, do you have a TBR game or process for reading them? Um, not always, but currently I have I have a huge list of books I want to read. I mean, it, it's probably there's about a thousand books on this list. So what I do is I have them divided between on genres. So I have my list of mysteries, list of science fiction, you know, so on. Uh, and then at the beginning of the year, I will pick, um, you know, like 25 books from each genre and then put it in a list of 200 books. And then in that list of 200 books, uh, I have them divided up into sections of 10. And, and then each time I finish a book out of, that neck, out of that one section, I'll then move on to the next section and the next section. And then I'll usually just pick a random, have uh, like a spinner or a random number generator tell me which number, you know, in between 1 and 10, 10 and 20, so on. Uh, which book I'll read. That's what I've been doing this year. It sounds really kind of uh, OCD now that I say it all out loud, but um, uh, it, it's been a lot of fun doing it that way. And I was getting, it was getting harder and harder for me to to pick a book to read next. So I, uh, I just did it that way. So it would be more of a random choice. And it has kept my TBR feeling a little more fresh as well as helping me avoid having to choose what book I read next. If it's a book I really want to read or make sure I read this year or or within the next year, I'll just slip it into the to the list somewhere. So yeah, at what point has this become an obsession? You know, I don't know. Do you have a question 9? Do you have a book buying problem? I don't, but I wish I did. Um <laughs> maybe I do actually. It seems like every week there's a book that comes in the mail or, or we go, my wife and I enjoy going on a date where we just go to the bookstore and walk around and look at books um, and talk about books. It's, it's a lot of fun. If I had a lot more money, I would definitely not have any money because I would be buying it on books and bookcases. Thanks to this, these prompts, I feel like I might need an intervention, to be honest. Uh, so thanks for that. Uh, thank you for, for tagging me. Question 10 says to tag two or three others to ponder their book buying process. So I don't know if they've done this, but I will tag um, Sterling Reads, Booking Through Life, and Anne with a book. Uh, so those channels are tagged. Uh, I've enjoyed their channels. And if you have already done this tag, um, just let me know in the comments then, and uh, I'll, I'll check out your video. All right. Oh, one last thing. Don't want to miss this. And then number 11, know you are awesome, just as you are. Being a book lover is amazing. Well, okay, now I feel better, uh, maybe less psychotic <laughs> over my book buying uh, issues. So thank you, uh, Bookworm Adventure Girl, for tagging me in that. Uh, this, was, this was fun. Uh, happy Tag Tuesday, everyone. I'll see you uh, next week, hopefully, for another tag video. And uh, stay tuned for this week uh, to my channel. Like and subscribe. I've got uh, several videos coming out this week, probably. 
Um, so stick around for that. All right. Take care.